Good afternoon, everybody. I, I'm here with Tom Ferry, the number one coach in the United States. And Al Filippone's here with us. He is probably the first to develop teams in the United States about 30 years ago. And so today we're going to have a little discussion on team building and stuff. What do you think is necessary for a successful team building? And i ask Tom first. I think it comes down to, first and foremost, the individual's ambition, right? How many people do you want to help? How much business do you want to do? And then you scale to that ambition. Um, if you ask me, you know, what are, the, what are the pieces, which I'm sure we'll get into, I think it always starts first and foremost with a great operator, mm -hmm. right? Someone that can help run the back end. Al's a terrific face. He can go out and he can engage with clients. Mm -hmm. He can move the needle. He can transfer skills, which is an incredible gift. You mm -hmm. have the ability to actually take what you've done and instill it into others. That's team building 101, which most people fail at, so congrats. So I think it's having that great operator, that great face for the business, and then the right mix of salespeople and marketing and support, and transaction support, and listing launch, et cetera, to match your ambitions. It's about uh, leadership, uh, having a culture, mm -hmm. uh, a vision that aligns with your culture, hiring yep. people who fit into yep. that mold. Yep. Uh, continually evolving mm -hmm. your business um, and hyper-focus. You have lots of meetings, you have lots of reviews, lots of accountability. Most teams are just winging it. So give us a little bit of that and then Tom, you can tell Well, it's that. funny. I was talking to uh, my former uh, brother-in-law once who started a company up in Boston, a very successful company and he had a lot of young salespeople mm -hmm. on the team. He told me they have a meeting every morning at 8.30. Yes. And I thought, you know what, this is probably something I should bring to my business. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have four opportunities for learning training every week. Smart. I, meet, I meet with the agents individually, one-on-one, mm -hmm. -on -one for mm -hmm. status updates. Uh, they've already written a business plan for the next year, so we've kind of go over that, see how it's working, what is working, what's not. Mm -hmm. um, I have an hour of training every week, and that's open to everyone. Uh, it tends to be attended by the newer agents, but I have an agent who's our top producer who comes to the meetings, just loves them. Sure. sure. Um, at the team office meeting, I have a, uh, one, of, one of those every week, and I always leave 20 minutes towards the end once we get through the other stuff to role play, talk about when we go over instant marketing, new listings, mm -hmm. uh, what was the source of business, uh, yeah. what objections, how did you overcome that? Uh, and then the fourth opportunity is I created something I call a $10 million club. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why I call it that other than it sounds good. Yep. Uh, it's open to everyone. It's an opt-in. Mm -hmm. um, but your attendance is required. Three kind, of a, kind of a mastermind? Well, if you want to well, strive it's, to it's get there? About, not really. It sounds like that's what mm -hmm. it should be. But sure. it's really more about life, business. Um, you know, I'll, I'll send an article out the night before on I mean, a short article on failure. Sure. Um, and then we meet the next day and have a video, maybe a mm -hmm. TED talk or whatever on sure. failure. And then we just kind of, and it's been a, it's not only great for growth, personal growth, mm -hmm. but it's been a great bonding experience for yes. the agents. It's, yeah. I mean, the things that they talk about there, they just mm -hmm. open up. How do you think teams fail? Um, how much time do we have? <laughs> it's the same reason that 90% that of small businesses fail and 87% of real estates fail. Um, you, you talked a lot about culture and vision and training and, and scaling people. Um, most people that get into real estate, this is a second or third career for them. So even though maybe they came out of corporate America, or maybe they came direct from the military, or you, know, the, you and I both know the best agents are former school teachers, nurses, right? Because they're used to herding cats, <laughs> managing 500 different emotional states at all times, right? And all the paperwork, they're like, this is easy, and I get paid? Sign yeah. me up, right? Most people didn't come into this looking at it as a business, right? right? So, so we've gone through that evolution. When I first started 31 years ago, people were selling houses, and, right. and it was you know, almost you know, all male, right? And now today it's 58% you know, female, right. right? Like, yeah. it's just interesting how you watch the trend. So why did they fail? Uh, they lack accountability, they lack a vision, they lack the emotional and mental fortitude to deal with the cycles and the challenges and the upsets and the failures. 
they take things too personal. Um, somebody leaves their team, they cry and want to go drink instead of <laughs> celebrating the fact that you've helped them mature enough that they can do something else. Or they put a spotlight on you and recognize that you know your leadership wasn't what they needed anymore. Yeah, when I, I, I coach some team members, it, what's astounding to me is how they don't know their accounting. They don't know their expenses. Sure, sure. They don't know their, what they're paying for. Yeah. They're just out there winging it. Yeah. What's the, I mean, what, how does somebody succeed doing that? Or can they? So a couple of years ago, we, so we have, um, I have 178 business coaches around the world, right, in five wow. different countries. So, so we figured out you know, when you, so for us, because we record every session, we built software, it's all video based. We were the first to go all video three years ago. And when you start looking at 19,000 recorded sessions every month and what the dialogues are, it's, it's beyond saying, hey Al, what do you think? I actually can turn to the, you know, the system and say, tell me the words that are used the most by our most successful clients and our most successful coaches. What did they discuss all the time? And what we discovered about two years ago, the first year into this was, 70% of the conversations that coach and client leading a team are having or individual agent, number one is reviewing their goals and their business plan, right? Hey, you said you wanted to do this, Al, where are you at? Right, Pearson's law, right? Whatever you measure improves, right? End of story. Second thing was market intelligence and your numbers, right? So your numbers is not just, hey, how many calls to a contact, how many contacts to a lead, leads to an appointment, listings to a sale, what percentage of list, you know, we look at all of that and then we look at the market, but then a big part of it also is where you at financially, right? The, like those are your numbers. And when you keep bringing this to people's attention, people get better, right? People start to become aware of the fact that, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm buying $2,000 a month in Facebook ads and my cost per lead is $4 per lead and I convert two out of 100. Like this is a no brainer. I should spend $100,000 a month on this, right? Like it becomes obvious. And then the other two, 70% of our time is, is obviously on their, their marketing, right? Making sure that they are, um, from a sales standpoint, I put marketing and sales together, but mm -hmm. you know, from a marketing standpoint, are we positioned right in the marketplace? Are we getting the number of come list me calls when we show up on appointments? Are we getting the listing? Are we getting it at the right price? Are we getting it at the right term? So all of that. And then the last one is scaling people. Systems, autom uh, you know, automation, and people. And what we found is the ones that were spending 70% of their time on those conversations were the fastest growing teams in the country. Yeah. Right, and individuals as well. So we've made that the standard of how we operate. Mm -hmm. Al, will you do uh, some additional techniques such as door knocking for expired lists and things of that nature? Talk about how you get your people out in the field. Well, I just borrowed from uh, the way I established my business. Mm -hmm. um, I carved out a section of town where there were hiring homes, about 2,500. Sure. And I was sending out a newsletter every six weeks. Mm -hmm. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Uh, actually, what I did is I mailed 2,400 every six weeks, and I delivered the other 100 door to door. Very smart. And found the best. How did you pick the 100 that you were going to deliver door to door? We started. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we hit all 2,500 houses by the time we were. Got it. Got it. Uh, oh, okay. So you did 100 at a time. Okay, got it. It makes sense. Time. And um, once in a while, get someone who was really, you know, not overjoyed to see us, but that was really few and far between. Mm -hmm. Uh, we would, uh, it's funny, I always chose the coldest day in the winter time and the, and the hottest day in the summertime Smart. for the sympathy effect. Oh, oh sure. Oh, used to get you you, you poor thing, shelter. do you need some water? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you want to come inside and, and heat and up? And, and, right? Sure. And I, yeah, Very oh, smart. Absolutely. And I, I have to say Saturday was the best day because absolutely. most people are home mm -hmm. and they look, say, look at this guy. It's a Saturday and he's out pumping. He's out hustling. Yep. Um, and it's just built on itself and... Uh, the more mailings and you know, so he does. So he has a section. I live in that section called mm -hmm. Greenfield Hill. Mm -hmm. He has a forty-five percent market share for over twenty years. Good over twenty years, and now he just updates a little mm -hmm. bit. He sends mm -hmm. out a, a for instance, just his touts that he has number one market share sure. for thirty years, and and his, his first mover's advantage. Absolutely. You, it, you, well, talk you, about you control the brand and the mind of the consumer. Like exactly. that's the game. Well, two interesting. Things so, mm -hmm. as far as consistency is mm -hmm. concerned, you know, every once in a while the business person of the home would say, "Can I ask you something?" I mean, you're here. why isn't anyone else doing this? Yeah. And my answer to myself was, mm -hmm. "They are, but they just do it once or twice and they yeah. give up." Yeah. We had an agent on the team who um, she she was a previous customer, 
Mm -hmm. And when she went to sell her house, before she was a team member, she called and listened. Agent who sold her the house called and said, you know, well, why, you know, why didn't you call me or whatever? Mm -hmm. And the agent was explaining it to us after she joined us, you know what? I didn't even think of calling her. Al had almost brainwashed me into thinking that I need to list with yeah. him if I live in yes. this section of town through the direct mail of marketing. So, so the team leader must yeah. get the people out mm -hmm. in the field, yeah. the team? Well, so, but, but I want... Okay. Here's, so here's what goes through my mind, right? It's actually the direct mail. Right. It's, it's the direct mail. It's the consistency of marketing. Controlling the things you can control, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. I can write the check and I can do the direct mail and then you overlay knocking on the doors, right? right? Then you overlay like being professional at open houses and making connections and being seen around town. Right. This, this is the sexy stuff that nobody wants to talk about. Right? right? Well, people go, people, it's not sexy. I'm like, no, it's sexy. <laughs> Having 40% market share is sexy. Well, and then they're also more receptive to you because there's the lean okay. Social proof, I social proof, yeah. just listed, just sold, market yeah. updates, here's what's right. going on. And every time, Al, 41, do, okay, did you ever do, did you ever like, take your like transaction list oh, yeah. and upload it into Google Maps and create the map well, of like, they're like, he well, sold every house well, in our neighborhood. Well, what we did is we created a map and put a red star wherever exactly. we saw, and, and it was yes. just full. Of yeah, of that. See that, yeah. that we, started, we started helping clients do that in 2010 and it was just, rem they would go, oh my goodness. Well, so the science behind it, a friend of mine runs three day blinds, right? It's the, they sell you know drapes right. and blinds right. and all this stuff and he, he does about $2 million a month in digital advertising. I called him one day and said, what's the single greatest clicking ad you've ever had? And he said, outside of during the Oscars, when someone wears a beautiful dress, and then we take that dress and we turn it into draperies and say who wore it best, he mm -hmm. said, that one gets, gets clicked on a bunch. He goes, it's maps. Maps give you a 30% lift in your, so on, from a digital standpoint, it's bananas. In direct mail, it's so visual, because they, they're going, Oh, I know that house, and oh, that's my street, and this is where we live. It makes it very real for people. So, congrats. well, when you have a street of ten houses and you sold nine of them, it, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so very smart. Teams, they actually mature, and a team leader wants to pass up a baton to the team yes. agents. How does that work? So, so when we started um, synthesizing and then ultimately codifying team strategies. You know, there's lots of different, you know, family business, there's SEAL teams, which are your know, four or five really good people that are all cross-trained. Today, we've got the industrialized team, which is where I put yours or, you know, one of my clients, Justin, who has you know, 200 sales agents on his team. And, and we're seeing that more and more around the world. Um, there's basically a couple different evolutions. You start first with that, that first assistant. Oh my God, can he or she do it better than me? Oh my God, they did, this is great. Now I'm free, right? I can go sell more houses or play golf or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then you leverage again and you get that first sales associate. And you're like, okay, can I trust you know, my, this referral to Al? And Al does a better job and they like Al more than me. Like, this is great. <laughs> then you start to scale and you finally get to you know, where the agent is still the most productive, agent, most productive person on the team. And what I'm always trying to push them towards is, if that's your bag, if you just love going on listing presentations, don't do anything else. Just go on listing presentations. But if you truly want to build a saleable business, the team has to outproduce you. And the numbers actually say, right. you want to be doing no more than 15% of the transactions, and that makes you a saleable asset to all the companies that are out buying companies, right? Mm -hmm. Like That's yeah. how you build something that's truly repeatable and, and scalable, because mm -hmm. you don't have to be involved every single day. Right. And then from there, we see succession plans, we're seeing ESOP deals being done, we're seeing teams that are buying other teams, teams that are you know being acquired. I mean, it's, it's, it's absolutely one of the most exciting times, in my opinion, to be in real estate right now, mm -hmm. if you have some charisma, mm -hmm. if you can create a plan, if you can have a model, and you're truly committed to helping everybody else as you are, achieve their greatness. Because right. you can put that on steroids. That's, that's how he built his business. Absolutely. Right? You know, how would you suggest the, the arrangement for team transfer? You being in the trenches with the teams. Well, I mean, I think, you know, to state the obvious, choosing the right person is important. Mm -hmm. Choosing someone who could obviously carry it off financially, mm -hmm. but is also 
very successful themselves. I attribute that as, uh, to one of the things that led to success. The market share we talked about that I singularly had. Yes. That helped me from a recruiting perspective. 100%. Was trying to build the team. Yes. Uh, someone that they respect um, and that they think is fair. Mm -hmm. So a lot goes into that sauce. Obviously, you need to have the financial capabilities, mm -hmm. but it has to be someone who would be a good leader themselves. Um, mm -hmm. and, and again, as I said, has a book of business and you know is prepared to take it to the next level and um, needs to be willing to give up control. I think that's one of the things that's that big. really impedes many agents yeah. from being able to grow a team. Well, they're is, all control freaks. I mean, even sure. team leaders are control <laughs> uh, One thousand percent. <laughs> but, but remember, a lot of them, you know, they're solo entrepreneurs. Yeah. So they were born and bred doing everything on their own. Right, so all of a sudden now, you know, we talked like we talked about the emotion of hiring your first assistant. Right. Can he do it better than me? Oh, let me show you how I input a listing into the MLS. I follow this form. Oh, I think I can do that better than you, and I can actually type, and you can't, right? Yeah. Like, but until you get over that hurdle, right, and then the ego of I don't have to have my name on everything. I don't have to have every transaction. Like, like right. that's an evolution. Right. And 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 you know, we talk about like Maslow's pyramid. Like we're talking about you know the self-actualized leader versus the one that's still trying to figure out like how I can get all the kudos. Right. 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 Not every, not everybody's going to get there and not everybody wants to get there. That's the other interesting distinction. Mm -hmm. I've lots of clients. They like being in right. the trenches doing deals. And I kind of figured out a way to do both about mm -hmm. when I want to do present uh, uh, Forum presentations. I, I I started realizing that about half of the people didn't know who I was affiliated with, sure. and a half did. We kind of figured out a way to yeah. promote the agents, but also not lose our brand. Yes, and I've seen a lot of you know a lot of agent teams like yourself that they'll come to me and they say you know should should I have buyers agents? And my response is, if you're bringing in a large number of internet leads for buyers, that probably makes sense. If you're not doing that, you should have agents and they should all have their own geographic farm. And you should have your which face and their face, right? And right. one number, which by the way is just a Google number that whoever answers the phone answers the phone, but that, that client goes to that agent who's working that farm inside of this team, inside of this brokerage, and that's where you see cohesiveness, scaling, growth together, a, a, a true well, team. Well, for the, for the most part, every section of this town mm -hmm is being mailed to by someone on my team See, that's they're creating what I created. And there's a section where we are now in Southport, mm -hmm. Connecticut, yeah. which is even uh, as an array of high-end homes, mm -hmm. more so than Greenfield Hill, and three agents on the team, on my team, partnered up Smart. and implemented the same plan, and now they're dominating with that 40 yeah, to 45 percent market share. Yeah. Yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to ask you, do you see teams inside of teams? Well, I call them partnerships. Yeah. So there's two or three people, they work together. I've been very successful in kind of gauging who will be mm -hmm. uh, good partners for one another. Sure. And, and, it's, and I'm seeing it more and more. So what about, what about though um, uh, assistants or operators? Like do you have it all operationally for your team? Or can they have their own showing agent if they wanted, right? Could they have, you know, because no, no lockbox, right? You know, by appointment only stuff. They're free to do that, but they don't. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I really overloaded our office with support staff because my thinking was a lot of you were talking about the transference from men yeah. to women. Yes. And a lot of them have other responsibilities, yeah. familial and otherwise. Sure. So I thought, you know, if they're going to have time to be in the office for an hour or two a day, mm -hmm. I don't want them doing $10 an hour activities, yeah. making copies. Yeah. So we really loaded it with support staff, a director of operations, administrative person, a social media person, a back office. So they really do everything for them. Yeah. They service the client, the agents, in servicing their clients. They help them. That's the team model. Right. My question, final question, is how big should a team be, Tom? Ten years ago, I did a trends report and I said, here's what's going to happen. Teams are going to dominate real estate and ultimately teams will be bought and sold. Right? Just like companies were bought and sold, teams will be bought and sold. And all of that has certainly played out. And that was no mm -hmm. Nostradamus. All you had to do is just look at a team out produces mm -hmm. an individual. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at um, the future of it, I think there's going to be teams with two and three and four hundred people. Right? We've already seen companies that have figured out, hey, you can have an office here and an office there and a team over there and a team over here. And with WeWork and Remote and Starbucks and Zoom, where I can put 300 of my teammates on a Zoom video session and do a virtual sales meeting. I mean, 
This is stuff that's happening but every that's single day. company now. That's yeah. not a team anymore. That's more well, of a company. Don't you think it's a company as opposed to a team? Well, to me, I, is I, like, I, I, I do agree. I'm that not just debating it. Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, I mean, I, listen, wrong. You, here's that's, the thing. Real estate is and forever will be the wild, wild west. <laughs> oh, oh, that's what's right. so beautiful about it. <laughs> but if you ask me what is the, what is the yeah. optimal team, yeah. five or six salespeople, enough to manage your open houses yeah. so you're not giving them out to everybody else, yeah. you know? I think it's individual. I mean, I agree with what you said at first. It, mm -hmm. It's as large as the team leader can handle. Bingo. I haven't stopped, there's 50 agents on the team. I haven't stopped recruiting. Yeah. I kind of basically reduce uh, recruiting to the three R's. Basically, mm -hmm. reputation, yep. retention, and research. Yep. So our reputation, uh, there, there's really word on the street among the agents that if you go to Al Filippone Associates, you're making the decision to work. Yeah. You're going yeah, to, yeah. to work. Yeah, so that's yeah. the reputation. Not great. Part. Yeah. <laughs> Only for agents that want to work. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that's yes. you know. So that's out there. That's the great. retention part is making sure everyone on the team is being serviced mm -hmm. and happy and productive, and then the research part is. Everyone knows who the top producers are in the town. Yep. I look for that agent who's been in the business, if not brand new, for a couple of years, who I could walk okay. into. I could walk into a broker's open house and spot right away if they had go. Uh, yeah. Well, your intentions are up because you've been around for a long right. time. Yeah. And those are the ones that I want to go after. Now. Yeah, yeah. We, I can sit down. I, I can see somebody for five seconds and know whether you're no. making it. She's got it. Yeah. <laughs> She's yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. That's the secret sauce. How do we get yeah. her inside the company? If they take a yeah. long time filling in the paperwork to join the company, yeah. they're not going to make it. No, they're overthinking. <laughs> yeah. All so, right. so again, I want to be clear. Industrialized teams, optimal, five, six, seven people, but at the end of the day, we're on the same page. It's how ambitious are you? Like we're seeing teams now yeah. that they're hiring sales managers. Yeah. Who are, yeah, their job is right. recruit, retain, yeah. train, develop, deal doctor, work on all that stuff because the agent wants to go on 50, 75 listing appointments. And I always set the bar high. When we were growing, I didn't compare our production to the other agents or teams in towns. Mm -hmm. I used to compare our market share to the smart. other offices. Very smart. And that was the bar for yeah. me. And there were times when we were second in our marketplace after the yeah. Ravis after what you're Ravis, you're like, ah, oh. well, but they're on our side. But I was you know, proud of that. I mean, that's what Absolutely. I was looking for, to do yeah. more than yeah. national brands. I think the big thing yeah. that, that people need more exposure, like watching this video, this is just exposing people to what's possible. Right. There could be a brand new agent watching this right now that's like, I've seen Al's name around town forever. The guy's a legend. You know what? If that guy can do it, I can do it. Do it. Right? Yeah. And that, that's the yeah. beauty of this business. Well, see, you see, the beautiful thing is the company has the sort of the personality, the dynamics to be, let you be who you want to be. Yeah. It's not a, we don't have a box that you have to go in. No. Okay, there may be other companies that put you in a box, but that's yeah. not us. You're an entrepreneur, I'm an entrepreneur, mm. roll the dice, do yeah. it. I'll yeah. help Let's you the go best for way it. you can. And with that, we're going to end up the show, and I'm going to say thank you very much. Okay. Appreciate it.